their weapons. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, since September 27th, the rescue service has been uh, intensely servicing from the very first day that the bombing and the shelling of uh, Stepanagat town started and the whole staff along with the uh, civil service defense uh, infrastructure was fulfilling all its functions and all its duties um, with the alarm ringing across the town. Right now, we have approximately 25 fatalities and over 100 uh, wounded in, among the civilian population. We have over 2,800 uh, both residential and cultural and other public buildings. Right now, the main functions of the service are right now to identify the unexploded ammunition and the neutralization thereof. And right now, all these explosives and the weaponry and the ammunition is identified. It is removed outside the borders of the Panagar town, and it is neutralized there. As you know, uh, all the duties and all the functions of the service are humanitarian in their nature and they are all targeting at a stronger rear and uh, both rescue servicemen and doctors and policemen can uh, be deployed as border service. This much right now, um, and we're working in this direction. So we will have general questions, I believe. And now I would like to give the floor to you. Since September 27th, for 17 days already, we have been working day and night. Our rescue servicemen, without any hesitation, are working on the front line in the rear. And uh, without any hesitation, we have been supporting our civilian population ever since we had bombardment. Uh, we um, already had the alarm going, and we organized people's uh, People were organized into the shelters, and this is when we mobilized all our rescue staff. And uh, from then on, we already worked on ensuring supplying food and medications to the people sheltered in the bomb shelters and bunkers. So we are collaborating with different rescue groups from the Republic of Armenia who are helping us to carry out humanitarian aid functions. And in order to operatively fulfill this function, we also were joined by the soil and ground inspectorate staff from the Ministry of Environment of the Republic of Armenia, as well as we had some volunteer rescue servicemen. We are fulfilling our functions disregarding the alarm as well as the bombing and shelling. All these works are done in the conditions of shelling so that we ensure the supplies of medication as well as food to our population. Before the launch of the war, um, I think it is important to note that even before the launch of the war, together with all stakeholder organizations, we had previously cleaned and maintained the shelters. So so that they were all ready to serve our population. So we're happy they were there and they could serve our and host our population. We did all this work in compliance with our civil defense plan, which was implemented during the war times, and we're working in compliance with this plan. One thing is obvious that Azerbaijan uh, breaching all the provisions of the Geneva Convention has targeted the civilian population and civilian infrastructure. The state service of the emergency uh, situations of Artakh and its staff has always been there for our population, and we are ready at the cost of our own lives to support and to save our citizens. Thank you very much. Questions? Do you have any data on 
which segments of the settlement or, of, or, or the town you have unexploded explosives and what are the actions that you take in this direction? I would like to say that in Stepanakert town, we have approximately 700, uh, 670 identified pieces of uh, ammunition. Uh, and of course, here we're speaking about those weaponry that we now can safely remove from Stepanakert and neutralize them. We will, of course, continue these actions after the ceasefire across the Republic, because it was not Stepanakert only that was bombed, but all the other regions. And perhaps every single one of you knows that we have identified uh, such ammunition in Izakov, Tumanyan, Hakimian streets. That is to say, almost in all the streets of Stepanakert. But right now, we can say that as of now, 90, 95% uh, of the threat has been neutralized. Mr. Arzumanyan, we know that when Stepanakert was actively shelled, we also had the staff of the emergency situation service uh, arriving there. Do we have all the gear and the safety gear if, God forbid, we have a similar situation, we effectively respond to the situation and provide uh, help to our population immediately. As I already said, from the very first day, uh, both Stepanaget and regional service departments fulfilled their duties fully. And as you said, if, God forbid, we have the same scenario, the emergency service staff is fully standing ready. And you know that the headquarters of the service was shelled too, but I would like uh, to say that this did not hinder us and did not stop us from providing our service at the highest level. And in terms of the unexploded ammunition, have you neutralized it all, or is this work going on? As, as I said, it is still underway, and after the fire is ceased right now, uh, we will continue. Right now, we're largely focusing on Stepanaket, and after the ceasefire is established, we will already uh, work outside Stepanaket. How are you going? How, how do you connect? How do you liaise with the population? We have the hotline 911, all this. Uh, um, hotline phone numbers can be used uh, both by the citizens and by other services as soon as they identify unexploded ammunition. So we receive a lot of calls. We identify most of the pieces based on these calls because people find them in their yards. And um, sometimes it is really impossible uh, for us to identify these pieces if we're not alarmed or alerted by the citizens. So we receive these uh, alarm calls on our hotlines, and we take them and we remove them. As we can understand, the geography is quite broad, and it's not just the Panaget that is dangerous in this regard. Yes, you're quite right. It is not just the Panaget. Almost all the towns of the Republic uh, were subject to this threat. And sometimes also um, in the adjacent areas of some villages, we have similar problems. H have we had any cases when there was a um, fatality or a casualty because people were not uh, really careful? No, we didn't have such a problem. Uh, and have you provided awareness raising? Yes, of course, we have conducted awareness raising. And also, uh, if we failed in our large scale neutralization, we would definitely have uh, bad outcome scenarios. Thank you very much. If we do not have any more questions, I would like to remind you that at the Artsakh Information Center, we were hosting Sasun Sarukhanyan head of State Inspectorate for Fire and Technical Safety and Mehagar Zumanyan, Head of the Rescue Department. This much for now. Goodbye.